Lift your hands and begin to bless God. The Bible says in all things, give thanks unto the Lord. The Bible says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercies endure forever. Wherever you're standing, wherever you're sitting, I want you to lift your hands and begin to give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercies endure forever. Open up your mouth if you can, begin to speak in tongues if you can. Thanking him for his goodness, thanking him for his mercies, thanking him for protecting you, thanking him for how far he has brought you. Come on, somebody, anybody, everybody, lift up your hands wherever you are and give him praise, for he is worthy of your praise. If you can pray and speak in tongues, please do so. As tonight being the grand finale of this conference, we're asking God to speak so clearly in the midst of chaos, in the midst of noise, in the midst of pain, in the midst of chaos, God still remains the same. The Bible says he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Spirit of the living God. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted up. Let your glory be upon this land. Let your glory be upon America. From the beginning of the year, you told us to keep praying for the nation. So that every plan of the enemy will be diverted and aborted. So Lord, for the sake of the few of us who from the 1st of January kept on praying consistently, just as you said, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy. Spirit of the living God, tonight fall afresh on us. My body is tired, Lord. My vocal cords are tired. But once you feel me, you will give me strength. Tonight, let it be the best night ever. Speak to your children. Let us hear you and you alone. Give us a message for the season that will turn and change our lives around. Thank you for delivering us from evil. Thank you for speaking to us from Friday, Saturday, and tonight letting us understand why we are in this wilderness period and what we must do. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, tonight let your name be glorified. And let your name be lifted up. Let the saints watching, standing here, shout a big amen. 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 I want to take this opportunity to welcome everybody that's watching us online, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Instagram, 
and wherever whichever social media platform you're watching us we want to welcome you exceptionally may god bless you there's a message for you do not move from where you're sitting if you're driving please focus whilst driving but let your ears be here remember this that it's not our choice um that you wouldn't be here but whatever the enemy tries to plan god has a master plan let me repeat it again whatever the enemy tries to plan god always has a master plan and so don't think you are our own in bed i don't want you to be eating when i'm preaching i want you to take the bible focus on the word uh, because the word of god is life and light and tonight you will be blessed everybody watching us on the sunday night i promise you the message that's coming out will bless you and change you i want to take this opportunity and admonish you to keep praying for america for the next two weeks strange things are about to happen for the next two weeks strange things are about to happen if your grandmama if your mama if your papa educate your children to stay home if uh, listen to me very carefully the enemy is trying to orchestrate something evil strange bloods are crying from a strange altar and if you check spiritually setting cycles are about to repeat um, yesterday mama told me something that made me look at things from a spiritual perspective um, she told me that the young man that just died George Floyd died the same day his mother died um, if you know about family altars you will understand that family altars can provoke you to be at the wrong place at the right wrong time and so he dies the same day his mother died and about two minutes before he passed out no go ahead huh? and his mother died two years ago watch this and a few minutes before he he took his last breath on earth all he was shouting was mama mama so my, when mama told me my wife told me that he died the same day of his mother I, I had to sit down and look back at certain things and 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 and, and Tuesday I'll be preaching the message titled who did this to us who did this to us who did this to the black race why this is being done to the black race I will take time believing God to give me information so we will understand why if you understand listen when when i was a child i had measles and this measles affected my left ear which almost made me deaf in my left ear when i was a little boy my father was in the United States and apparently he traveled and came back down and when he got my father and I are like how just I and my son are we're like this apparently I was very very ill but the moment daddy came back down from the United States he picked me up and he told me you're not sick then I said I'm not sick then he said he said apparently he said to me tell the nurses to leave the house then i told as little as i told the nurses leave the house i'm not sick according to what my father instructed me to do okay and this measles affected my left ear um hear this you see growing up now i understand why they tried to attempt to make me deaf because musically i would have been terrible how are you a musician when you're deaf in one ear? 
I will be explaining certain things to us on, on Tuesday why this is happening to the black race and what the black man should do to hold the battle. In, 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 when it comes to battle, there is a root call offensive and defensive. There are times you must be defensive strategically and there are times you are offensive strategically. And on Tuesday, I'll be taking time to break all these rules so the black race will understand that you don't need to go to shops to rob. You are worsening your case. It's a trap. They know you will fall in. They know that if they provoke you, you will go and rob and they will give them the opportunity to do what they need to do. Perhaps there's a doctor there that is supposed to heal somebody that ended up going to rob and they will put you in prison. I, oh God, don't get me started tonight. So I will be taking time to tell you that everything that they are doing is to provoke you to come out because they know that you're so angry that you start breaking things and the CCTV will be on you. You could have been a scientist, but you will spend the rest of your years in jail. On Tuesday, I'll tell you why this is happening to the black race. It didn't start from now. It started from Egypt. It started from Moses' time. I would tell you the importance of the black race then you'd understand that these battles has already been fought before and you must understand when to be offensive and when to be defensive strategically without offending anybody but through it all learn to trust in God it's a bit complicated because people are not Christians some are not believers that's why you got to be careful which riot you're going into because you might feel you're a Christian but somebody who you're standing by might not be a believer and that's where things will get complicated because you're not equally yoked. Okay? The, uh, and, and I pray that the African American leaders who are at the front line will discern with wisdom and know how to influence the young generation. I pray that all the movie actors and actresses and the top musicians who are African American will use their social media to speak and not let vulnerable people speak because nobody will hear their voices. But when influential musicians begin to speak, especially in the secular arena, their voices will be heard clearly. Stand as we read the word of God. And one more advice. African American must learn to start loving Africans. Because the white man tags you as African American. They're trying to let you know where you're coming from. So every African American start embracing Africans. And don't think we live on trees and we have a terrible accent. That's where you're coming from. I'm not doing politics tonight. Let me go straight to the word of God. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 17, verse 8. Psalms 17, verse 8. Psalms 17, verse 8. And I'm reading from the New International Version. New International Version. And it says... Psalm 17 verse 8, it says, Keep me as the apple of your eye and hide me in the shadow of your wings. I want everybody to read the scripture with me wherever you're standing, sitting at home. Read it with me at the count of three. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's all read it to God together. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadows of of your wings um, let's go to Zechariah 2 8 still reading from the new international version Zechariah 2 8 let's go 1 2 3 and I will read alone for this is what the Lord Almighty says 
after the glorious one has sent me against the after the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you for whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye so perhaps over here it's an angel speaking to a servant of God and he says for this is what the Lord Almighty says so it looks like Michael is speaking here after the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you in other words um, African American I'm about to be sent to deliver you against whoever is oppressing you um, I'm not doing politics tonight so if um, any part of the scripture works for you please take it so the angel of the Lord says for this is what the Lord Almighty says after the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you for whoever touches you touches the apple of God's eye whoever touches you touches the apple of God's eye Please remember that Psalm 17, 8 says that keep me as the apple of your eye and hide me in the shadow of your wings. And Zechariah 2, 8, Zechariah 2, 8, something is happening with the number 8, the figure 8. Psalm 17, 8, I am requesting that God keeps me as the apple of his eye and under the shadow of his wings. And Zechariah 2, 8, the angel is telling me that God the glorious one is saying to the nations that have plundered me not just nations but to people who are planning evil against me this is what the Lord God is saying whoever touches you has touched the apple of God's eye the other time a man spoke against me and he died on the spot that is what happens when you touch the apple of God's eye. I have seen several people lose their life, lose their destiny and their light when they spoke against what God was doing in my life because they touched the apple of God's Jeremiah 1, 3 to 12. Jeremiah 1, 3 to 12. I'm still reading from the New International Version. Jeremiah 1, 3 to 12. I'm reading from the New International Version. And through the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, down to the fifth month of the eleventh year, Zedekiah, son of Joshua, or Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile, forces the word of the Lord. So when they went into exile, the word of the Lord came to me, which is the prophet Jeremiah speaking. He says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, to me the prophet Jeremiah and this is God speaking God says before I formed you in the womb I knew you so God speaking to Jeremiah tells him that Mr. Prophet Jeremiah before I formed you in the womb I knew I knew you before you were born I set you apart now over here I set you apart means that I gave you an assignment on earth before you were born minister Caleb I I gave you an assignment before you were born um, before you ended up in America before you ended up in London before you ended up in Nigeria Kenya um, Dar es Salaam Sudan before you I set you apart and then I appointed you as a prophet to the nation so God is now beginning to tell prophet Jeremiah what his assignment was before he became a clot of blood in his mother's womb he said I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nation alas 
sovereign Lord I said this is Jeremiah speaking do you know I do not know how to speak I am too young this means that God called Jeremiah at a very young age there is something about God speaking to prophets and prophetesses when they are young like Samuel so Jeremiah over here tells God I am very too young an age to be spoken to or to be given an assignment now this tells me that let's just stay for figurative narrative um, information Jeremiah was 10 years old that means that the Almighty God stooped himself low to a 10 year old to tell him that before you were a clot of blood in your mother's womb I knew you that is why anointing has nothing to do with the age it's to do with maturity so Jeremiah replies to God and says I am too young but the Bible says at 7 that the Lord said to him do not say that you are too young you must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to do not be afraid of them for I am with you and I will rescue you this means that they will attack you but I will rescue you declares the Lord nine then the Lord reaches out his hands and touched my lips and mouth and said to me I the Lord God I have put my word in your mouth I have put my word in your mouth see today I the Lord God I appoint you over all nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow to build and plant that will be your story the Lord and so Jeremiah says the word of the Lord came to me and also said what do you see Jeremiah so this means that after God told him this is your assignment he now takes him to practicality he takes him to the ground and he starts training him so he takes him to the ground that's why most of you who are moving into your next level of ministry God will start revealing certain things to you so he takes him somewhere shows him something then he says what do you see Jeremiah and Jeremiah said master I see a branch of an almond tree and I replied and the Lord said to him yes you have seen correctly for I am watching to see my word to fulfill in your life so he is watching Jeremiah whilst Jeremiah is training and going through process he said can you see it well Jeremiah says I see it he said yes I am watching you to see that the word that I have spoken in your life will be fulfilled I am watching you to see that the word that I have spoken in your life will be for field Jeremiah 29 11 new international version the Bible says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not harm you plans to give you hope and a future and the last scripture for the night psalm 1 2 1 4 to 6 still reading from the new international version indeed he who watches over israel will neither sleep nor slumber the lord watches over you the lord is on the lord is your shade at your right hands the sun will not smite thee by day not the moon by night spirit of the living god tonight breathe on your children in the mighty name of jesus amen let's all be seated 
it's going to be a good, good, good night. And I want you to share. I want you to pass it on. Do your watch parties. As we're ending this conference, I want you to tell everybody here, Dr. Badu, he has a word and a message for you. So from Friday, I spoke on a message titled, Who is Watching Me? Who is Watching Me? Which made you understand that in as much as God had appointed David, David still need a human being to watch him, to recommend him to the king. David needed access to the throne. And so this person who recommends David goes and tell King Saul every quality and strength that David has. He tells him that I know a young man who is the son of Jesse that plays the harp with anointing then he tells the king that this man is a warrior this man is a man of war master this man is very very handsome and thirdly the lord is with him this means that this man describing david took time made it a passion to watch and study david didn't see him watching but the man was watching him and this tells me that you never know who was watching you behind the scene hence my message who was watching me i pray that my 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 those who will favor me in life will watch me rather than my enemies because if my enemies are watching me they will disfavor me then yesterday i preached a message concerning the wilderness friday was still the word wilderness yesterday's message is they are watching you in other words there are plans and schemes of the enemy that they've put together attempting to make you fail so Paul gets to the island of Malta and after a shipwreck he survives but the people in the island of Malta were extremely friendly so Paul thought okay I could live here and breathe a little bit then these people gathered wood and lit fire because it was cold suddenly when Paul wanted to gather fire a snake bites him now suddenly these friendly people who were very friendly are looking back at Paul to see if he will swell and die I'm wondering why they didn't help him yet they sit back to see if the snake will bite him and kill him the bible says they waited for a very long time and when they realized that paul didn't die but shook the snake off they said he is a god and this tells me that sometimes your enemy will plan evil against you expecting you to fall in that trap but they will wait for too long because nothing is going to happen to you and they will say your god is indeed a god and so that's who or they are watching me but tonight the message is he he watches over you now picking the scripture jeremiah 1 12 something struck me matter of fact I kept on pondering all throughout the night on this message Jeremiah 1 12 if you can put it back on the script on the screen God goes to prophet Jeremiah as a young man and tells him that Jeremiah before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you not not I know you no I so before you got into the present as a human being with a skin or as a clot of i knew you i this means that when he had not even become a drop of sperm god knew him 
when he was even not planned as a liquid God knew him in fact whoever gave birth to Jeremiah the moment that person was born on earth God knew that a prophet would come through his loins so before you were clot of blood in your mother's womb I knew you this means that God also wrote his assignment before he became a full-blown human being God orchestrated his purpose on earth before he became a full-blown human being that's why before I judge you before I criticize you I gotta know that God formed you watch this he said to him that I appointed you Jeremiah as a prophet to nations I appointed you as a prophet to nations even before you were born uh, this means that God had a plan and a purpose in place for you and I nobody on earth is a waste of time what would make you a waste of time is when you end up in the wrong environment nobody on earth is a waste of time it's your environment that wastes your time let me repeat myself again nobody on earth is a waste of time it is your environment that will waste your time what do I mean if God gave birth to you and said you will be the first lady of the United States then as a child your environment must ensure that you go through the right school to become the first lady so if your, your environment doesn't take care of you then your environment wasted your time and wasted your destiny and it takes a right person to still discover who you are because sometimes you could be walking feeling like a first lady but you don't look like it you could be talking feeling like a president but you don't look like it you could be walking feeling like a multi millionaire but you don't look like it and it's not the fault of God it's the fault of your environment You could be gifted, but if you are at the wrong environment, your giftings will become annoyance. You could be anointed, but if you're not in the right environment, your anointing could be annoyance. You could carry the power to heal, but if you are not in the right environment, you are wasting your time. So it is your environment that waste your time and that's got to do with whoever raised you if my father was a smoker and he always made me sit by him whilst he was smoking in as much as God has written in my destiny that once upon a time in my destiny I will I will plant a church called Rock Hill it would have delayed me perhaps in the next 10 years because my father didn't plant my feet well uh, did you are you getting what I'm saying so it has nothing to do with God it's to do with whoever raised me And I preach tonight so my father didn't give me money but he gave me the Bible and once he gave me the Bible minister Chris I begun to run with the Word of God because I don't need money all I need is the favor of God all I need is the hand of God leading me where I need to go all I need is the hand of God that will bring the right people around me to hold me so I will fulfill my destiny so God goes further to write down all of Jeremiah's assignment 
to him. God tells him how the assignment must be fulfilled. And then when God gives him an outline of how the assignment should be fulfilled, the Bible says God touches his mouth and tells him that Caleb, uh, Pastor Morgan, uh, Dr. Mo, Lady J, Lady Edwina, Lady Daisy, Lady Jackie, I, the Lord God, surely I have put hala, opayaka, my word in your mouth and from for the past six weeks I've been telling you what the word of God is it's in your mouth uh, this means that everything you say must come to pass because we have the dioxide ribonucleic acid of God the DNA of God so he tells Jeremiah that I have put my word in your mouth and then God tells him that today I God I appoint you over the nation you better receive this prophecy I receive this I receive it for my family I receive it for my daughter I have appointed you over nations that means that your name will have dominion in every nation may it happen to my children may it happen to my son may it happen to my daughters may it happen to every church member here God said I have appointed you over that means you will have dominion over nations over kingdoms nations are ruled by precedents kingdoms are ruled by kings so nations and kingdom to uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow to build and plant and then the bible said god took him to the training ground and that training ground is his wilderness David didn't become skillful in his father's house. David didn't discern sharply in his father's house. <laughs> Joseph didn't become sharp in his father's house. <laughs> he became sharp in the prison. He became sharp when he was being accused of something he never did. That's when he became sharper. Sometimes you might go through two things that wouldn't make sense, but God is still sharpening you. It's called sharpener. 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 And sometimes when you're using a sharpener, you discover that there's a blade that cuts every edge of the wood. Sharpener. Sharpener is not a blunt blade. It's a sharp blade that straightens you to become focused to the point where you need to reach. In your wilderness, when God is sharpening you, it's not a comfortable place. Friends will cut you. Your wife will cut you. Your husband will cut you. Your best friend will betray you. But it is still your wilderness. It's to sharpen your voice. It's to sharpen your eye. The wilderness has a sharpener. So in his wilderness, God says to him, What do you see? Most of the Psalms that David wrote was written in the wilderness. Every Psalm that David wrote was his life experience. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help 
this means that when he was looking down everybody had let him down and in tears he lifted up his eyes and was wondering where is help then he says my help so in his wilderness God says to him what do you see then he says God I see an almond tree then the Lord said good you passed the first stage of your school in the wilderness if David didn't kill the bear there would be another bear for him to kill if david didn't kill the lion other lions will come let me tell you things you must look forward to in the wilderness uh, if you have lions in the wilderness until you kill a lion you are not moving from the stage of battle with lions He who runs from a fight will live to fight another day. Perhaps you are experiencing the same trouble over and over again. So you had a problem in your marriage and you opted for divorce and you got a divorce. Then you got into another marriage and you opted for a divorce and you got the divorce. Then you married again and you opted for divorce and you got a divorce. It's simply because God is trying to tell you stay at that place and deal with this demon from your household but you keep running and still facing the same lion so David deals with the lion your test in the field or your battlefield with a lion is very different from your battlefield with a bear the lion could be your career your business the lion could be a different thing the lion could be your marriage then the bear will be your finances the bear would be you bearing a child the bear would be you having the capacity to be a single mother yet you have to raise queens oh and not prostitutes your bear could be let me repeat you being a single mother and you're determined to raise queens and not prostitutes so don't think that it is literally lions and bear everybody has the alliance and bear and if you run from the battle with a lion you will meet another lion so you better stand it and fight it listen when you want me to tell you the truth, what do you do? Give me a microphone. My father went into two marriages, had three children before he met my mother. Yeah? Okay. He couldn't fight the lion in his first marriage. He couldn't fight the lion in his second marriage. He fought the lion in his third marriage and is in that marriage for 42 years now. So I know the demons in my house. I know the war my father has fought. So if I bring trouble to my home, know that my father brought trouble to my mother. Or vice versa. If you want me to talk to him, give me a microphone. Because the battle I'm fighting, it has nothing to do with you. If you walk away, another person will come and it will be the same battle. So the youth of America is fighting police now. No, it goes beyond you. 400 years ago, 700 years ago, Martin Luther King spoke. Nobody heard him. He's dead and gone. You're not doing anything different same demon different strategies when i'm i'm talking about my household demon what about your own household demon you all got you got skeletons in your closets 
Some of you, your household, when they see great men, it, it detests them and it ensures that the women in that family ends up with armed robbers, criminals. These are lions and there. These are your period of wilderness. Don't eat the meal. No, don't eat the meal. Clean your mouth and behave like you are super holy. No, you're a big liar. You know what God brought you out. So if somebody is going through it, don't be a hypocrite. Help them out. That's why before I judge, I sit back to find out what your family altar is because it's not your fault you don't even know why you did it something made you do it family altar can I go deeper tonight so in the wilderness God tells him that what do you see then he says I see the almond tree then God said you've seen correctly you've seen correctly then this is what God says for I am watching to see that my words is fulfilled this tells me that your business is not your business any longer it is the business of God God tells Jeremiah you've seen good regardless of what you're going through i'm behind it i've got to monitor you i've got to watch you because it has nothing to do with you it's not your agenda anymore it's god's agenda so god tells jeremiah you have seen perfect you've done well with the lion you've done well with the bear uh, you're getting ready to now go to the palace uh, but before you get to the palace there is a goliath let me tell you ladies and gentlemen if you're not ready to go to the palace stop praying for breakthrough because before breakthrough happens go and check the sounds on how David kept praying for breakthrough but he had to go through you see before breakthrough you have to go through before breakthrough you have to go through the only problem is there is no manual that tells us what we will go through so you might think it's a lion but you know that we don't see lions and so what is the lion that I have to go through and what is the bear that I have to face and if you think that's the final battle hell no the next battle is a Goliath some of you saw your Goliath the moment you saw the Goliath, you told everybody, good night. And the only person that can defeat this Goliath in your family is you. Not your cousin. Not your little sister. Not your big sister. You. Not your big brother. You. So long as David is sleeping, Goliath will still mock the family. Oh, that's another message for tomorrow. So long as David is sleeping, Goliath is still mocking your family. David is a typology of honor that will bring honor to the suffering of your family. How many Davids are sleeping and have thrown in the towel? Do you know the sad part of the story? It didn't take a knife to kill Goliath. It took a stone. So the Goliath that you're running from the strategy to defeat him is just one stone the word of God so God looks at Jeremiah and tells Jeremiah you've seen it and you're not seeing it out of your own strength you're seeing it because I am watching over you in other words 
I am monitoring your steps. Leave him. It's okay. I am monitoring you. In other words, I am watching every movement. I am watching what you eat. You got to watch your diet. I am watching how you behave. I am watching how you talk. I am watching everything you do. Jeremiah, because before you became a clot of blood in your mother's womb, I knew you and set you apart. So even though you are born and going to school, and choosing your own friends just understand that I'm watching you because what I've placed in your mouth I cannot place in any other person's mouth if I could do it I would do it and so I am guarding your destiny I am guarding your mouth I am guarding all your mistakes because if you fail I fail if you fail I have to start all over again and the earth wets with times and seasons how am I gonna raise somebody to become a 29 30 years uh, the destiny would have been wasted uh, so even if you're not willing to do it uh, you will have to do it uh, because I put the word in your mouth uh, so through everything you are going through uh, I am watching you can choose not to come to church I am you can choose not to go to school I am you can choose to sleep home and not do anything all day I am I'm watching my word to be fulfilled you can delay yourself you can say you got a headache I will give you paracetamol and wake you up because the word is in your mouth you can complain you can murmur you can say I'm tired and I'm tired of doing this I ain't doing it anymore do what I am I'm watching to see that my word will fulfill. Let me explain this to you. God is a spirit. Spirit don't work with time. So in the spiritual realm, God's word is instant. But in the physical world, God's word takes time. Depending on, on place, environment. So he tells Jeremiah, I am watching to see time. My word being fulfilled when God gives you an ability he works with you he works with your emotions he works with your time he works with your pace if you're slow eat the fact that you're eating slow doesn't mean the food will disappear the only problem is if you don't pick it up quick by the time you hit old age you'd have to still pick it up and you'll be holding a stick and God is still waiting to watch his word perform. So Jaden, you picking the keyboard. It's not that you're deliberately denying yourself from what your own generation can do. No, it's simply because God's watching his word and you've picked it up quick. So at least when you hit your young age, you, you are strong to enjoy. Some of you will hit an age you have no teeth. But you still got to perform before you die. Ladies and gentlemen, this tells me that every word of God concerning your life cannot and will not fail because God. God himself is still watching his word, Dr. Mo, to perform, to come to 
pass the bible says his word does not return to him void in other words it doesn't come to him not completing or accomplishing what it's been said to do so when he sends his word his words has no choice whether you are in africa whether you are in asia whether you are in america whether you are educated whether you are not educated so long as destiny found you so long as destiny says you will become god is waiting for his word to come to pass and it shall come to pass i don't care the path of life i don't care the battles that the enemy has taken you through in your wilderness all i know and all i know is tonight because he's watching over you every word that he has said concerning you shall come to pass you are in your wilderness you are in so much pain but every word the lord has said concerning you it shall come to pass jeremiah encounters god at a, ten, at a tender age let's just say 10 years old and god tells him at the age of 10 that my word is with you and i'm waiting for my word to be fulfilled this means that even at age 17 age 18 whatever happens to him age 19 he still has the word of god saying i am waiting for my word to come to pass i am watching you so yet though i walk through the valleys of the shadows of death i will fear no evil for thou art and if you're with me it means you're watching over Uh, this tells me this tells me this tells me Colette this tells me uh, that no matter how bad my situation is all I need is the right people around me to tell me that we fall down but we get up all I need is people that will say for a saint is just a sinner who fell down but got up I don't need people who will kick me down and say it's all over I need people who say come up you are not dying in this year when a soldier goes to war with his friend one of the rules of soldiers is in this war Dr. Mo if I die and you survive don't leave my dead body here and if you die and I survive I'm not leaving you here whatever it takes if the enemy gets me honor my body and pick my body and bury me in my nation because if you leave me with my enemies they will kick my body but even if I've lost the battle honor me in my death that's the rule of a soldier So the problem and the reason why destinies are not fulfilled is you are surrounded by wolves. You are surrounded by tigers. You are surrounded with jealousy. You are surrounded with people who you thought were for you but were waiting for you to fail. That's why I said they are watching. Uh, Paul thought he had friends but they were watching to see him fail. So it's not that God doesn't want you to go through. And the problem is those who are around you saw you fail in your first test and said he's done and shut your name. Yet God was waiting for his word to perform. I, I feel God here. I feel God here. This tells me from today that no matter the situation I find myself in, no matter the trouble I find myself in, I must always remember that just as God told Jeremiah that 
before you were clot of blood in your mother's womb I knew you I remember what God told Jeremiah that I am waiting and watching over you for my word to perform this tells me that I am a battle ask in the hands of God in this end time so the enemy can give me a blow but I got to remember and be remembered not be kicked down but be remembered that before I was a clot of blood in my mother's womb he knew me and he's still waiting for his promise concerning me to come to pass ladies and gentlemen this means that God's integrity is at hand when it comes to you this means if you fail then God is a liar this means if he's promised to make you what you ought to become then it's God's word against the word of your enemy this means that you cannot fail this means even if you feel down he's gonna give his angels charge over you this means until you fulfill what he sent you to you will not die but live to declare the works of the Lord for God is watching and waiting to see his word concerning you fulfilled so every period you are going through in your wilderness Dr. Moe God is still waiting to see that's why we don't look like what we are going through if you look a mess then the message there's no message in there but you still look good in spite of the pain in spite of the hurt you're still putting your swag on in spite of your struggle in spite that you can't walk well you're still working it out don't let your enemy see what you are going through don't let social media mock you they are waiting to see you fail but because god lives you can face tomorrow why is he living because he is waiting to see the living word be fulfilled in your life so even if you wanted to fail you don't have a choice you cannot fail because God is waiting for his word to be fulfilled no matter how bad the situation is no matter how worse it is I must remember that I'm still a battle ask in the hands of God I'm still a battle ask in the hands of God no matter what trials I'm going through no matter how many people have said there is no help for him in God I must look back at Jeremiah and say to myself I am too needed to be wasted I must remind myself I'm too needed by America by Africa by Asia to be wasted so you can mock me but don't laugh at me for if I fall down seven times I will rise up one two three four five six seven before you were formed <laughs> before you were formed he knew you he knew you 
He knew how many hair strings you will have on your hair. He knew how many teeth you will have. Even though you lost your eyelash, he knows how many strings of eyelash and eyebrows you're supposed to have. He is God all by himself. He doesn't need anybody's opinion to bless you. He is God. G-O-G. Elohim. El Shaddai. The many-breasted God. He is the timeless one. Not limited by time, space, or place. He can be in your house and in my house at the same time whenever he wants to. And he's got the whole world in his Before you were born in America, I knew you. Before you were birthed in America, I knew you. Before you ended up in America, I knew you. Before you came to Rock Hill, I knew you. And I have plans for you. Before you ended up in Kenya, before you ended up in South Africa, before you ended up in Nigeria, with your strong accent, before you ended up in Ghana with your strong accent I knew you I knew the tribe I knew the place I knew the food you were gonna eat stop complaining stop regretting that you are an American stop regretting that you are African before you were formed I planned it stop regretting that you were just making her stop regretting her that you're from Grenada before you were formed I knew you I had plans for you and ladies and gentlemen don't look at your age and determine your stage did you hear what I said don't look at your age and determine your stage when Sarah was 90 God's plan still came to pass till date nobody older than Sarah has broken that record so shut up and endure the pain for it won't be long you will get out of this before you were clot of blood in your mother's womb I knew you it's supposed to make you better and not bitter stop reminiscing on your pain you are hurting yourself it's supposed to make you better it's supposed to sharpen your eyes it's supposed to keep you in focus stop remembering what she did and what he did and what that friend did that hurt you God was behind it. So, so Mr. Mr. David, you can hate lions, you can hate bears, but when you needed to show your CV to Saul, you referenced lions. And he told Saul to ask that lion. Sometimes what you're going through might not be from the devil. It might be God placing you in your wilderness. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It might be God right behind it. Stop giving the devil overnights. Stop praying wrong prayer topics. Before you were born, I knew you. So every stage you're going through, I am watching you. You can hide from everybody. You can hide from anybody. But one person you cannot hide from is God. He is the all knowing God. He is the all seeing God. My son, my daughter, God sent me to remind you that He is watching over you whilst you are in your wilderness it means that you are God's investment if he's watching over you 
to see you perform it's like an investor that has invested in a property you don't walk away from that property you monitor the property to see what's happening you clean it even if it goes through periods where house prices are down you take care of that property yourself because you know what you've put in that house you know it so God waiting to see his word perform means that he must monitor you so when you were going through your low moment thinking he was not there he was the still voice that kept on speaking to you and saying it is well when you got to your last straw do you realize he showed a dream and told you don't give up I am still God in your life I am watching over you some of you have the tendency of throwing in your towel when you're in the wilderness you have the tendency of giving up that's why for the past five years you've been running from your calling but get ready and face it because he's still watching his word to perform in your life he's still waiting waiting for you uh, to perform in your life uh, you better get up uh, smell the coffee uh, sharpen your weapon uh, sharpen your voice of prayer let the devil know uh, I am not afraid of you oh, I feel God here I feel God here I feel God here I feel God here. Uh, so the secret is this. The secret is this. Even God refuses to give up on you because you are not in heaven. If you were in heaven, God could have given up because heaven works with no time, but earth works with time. How long are you going to be a baby and grow teeth when in this generation, in this time, there is chaos and somebody must speak if he's to make your mother pregnant time means it takes nine months so even if you want to give up God cannot give birth to a child through nine months whilst we are in 2020 um, today is the last day of the month of June look at what is happening in America how would God give birth to a child if a baby comes and starts saying eh, eh, ah, hello hello America I'm a child and God has sent me the hospital will close scientists will start working on that baby they will slow it so you are at that place that even if you give up God has to pull you with your leg and tell you come on baby boy come on baby girl we gotta make this happen so you are at a state it's not about you it's about God's promise you're going through so much pain bad season coronavirus losing your job everything done <sighs> marriage almost breaking depression knocking at your door it's like God that's it there's no help for him in God but God sent me to tell you that this is your wilderness period And he's watching over you not just watching over you but waiting for his words to perform <laughs> this tells me ladies and gentlemen that that challenge you're going through will not kill you go back on the organ this tells me that the problems you're facing in your marriage will not get you bitter but it will get you better this tells me that that miscarriage you just went through will make you stronger this tells me that the pain you are going through will not kill you this tells me that that cancer will not kill you this tells me that that high blood pressure will not kill you that diabetes will not kill you that surgery will not kill you because God is watching over you 
you will go through the fire but you will come out refined that fire will not burn you out it will burn you in it will burn every chaff that's not supposed to be around you for he is watching over you he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty and i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be my buckler and my shield i shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow by day nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness not the destruction that wasted a new day a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at the right hand but with thy eyes will I see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord your refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil before thee neither shall any plague come near your dwelling they shall bear thee he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all your ways in all your ways in other words from monday to sunday they shall keep you from 1 a.m to 1 p.m they shall keep you from 1st january to 31st december they shall keep you because the lord is watching over you many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers them from all because he is watching over me over me over me because he's watching over me i will not be left barren because he's watching over me his name is a stake his integrity is a stake i might be going through pain however now i know that in my wilderness of pain he is watching 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 me watching me watching me so i will get through this i will run through this i will get through this it might be tough it might be heavy it might be painful but lord help me to get through this for you are watching me in the wilderness hey 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 it might look like you are going through it all alone it might look like you are going through the pain all alone but i came to tell you he is watching you to see his word fulfilled conference titled covered 2020 and the theme is the wilderness experience the first night titled who's watching me David was in the wilderness second night they're watching you Paul was in this wilderness third night he's watching you 
In other words, every stage of wilderness because his promise is yea and amen. Sometimes you might not feel God in that very problem you're going through. I've written a lot of exams that my teachers taught me. And one thing I noticed is sometimes the teacher keeps quiet and puts the question to see if you learned everything. So when God is not speaking, it's not that he doesn't want to. He's seeing if you learned it. The test of time. And to see if you pass that exam. No big teacher who is invigilating and sitting and watching students tells the student this is the answer. This no. The teacher that teaches you sometimes has to be quiet. So when you're asking God, where are you? And I'm tired. God has to be quiet. Because he's been teaching you through his word. Through his servants. He's been preaching the word of God. So those notes you're taking, whatever you're watching, take notes. You will need them. I make sure I cover every aspect of destiny and life. So if children in Rocky don't prosper, then I don't know which household you're coming from. That's why I have a problem with Christianity. Christians are good at making noise and when you ask them what did you learn, they don't remember. The interpretation of church was good was the band really the musicians really played if you ask them what did the preacher preach they say i can't remember but yeah Jaden did good so one hour i preached all he heard was that five minutes that Jaden played our attention span in the church is minimal that's where the enemy keeps winning over us because every area of your life God gives me a message to cover it. And I need to see you better and better every day. That means you're learning and God is speaking. Whichever aspect you are in your life now, understand that God might be quiet, but his eyes are not shut. God might not be responding, but his eyes are not shut. And in that wilderness, He's watching over you. Tonight, I want everybody to rise up and lift your hands. Wherever you're standing, wherever you're sitting. And you're going to ask for strength from God. Through this period of wilderness. You're going to lift your hands and ask him to give you strength. Some of you feel like giving up in your period of wilderness. You feel like throwing in the towel. And all you're going to ask God is strengthen me. Ignite my passion. Some of you have lost passion for that which you used to love. Some of you feel so hurt. That you don't know what to do. But what you don't know is. Like God told Jeremiah, I am watching over you. Everything has God's approval, not man's approval. For he who watches over Israel, he neither sleeps nor slumber. That's why I embrace every challenge in my wilderness very well. Because I've come to understand that it is a test of time. And how I pass this test will determine if God will increase my membership or he will not. So I embrace every battle, every war, learning at every stage of my life. Taking notes at every stage of my life. Making sure that I don't have to fight lions twice. I don't have to fight bears twice. Tonight, you're going to ask God for strength wherever you are standing. Wherever you're watching me from, you're going to ask God to give you strength. To endure this period of wilderness. Come on, lift your hands and begin to pray. God, give me strength to endure this period of wilderness. Some of you, that period might be so embarrassing. 
but understand that God is still watching over you if I had enough time I'll tell you things that Jeremiah went through that didn't make sense if I had time I'll tell you the challenges that Jeremiah went through that didn't make sense yet God said I am watching you God said to him that I'm with you. I want you to pray. Stretch your hands. Sometimes those you trust can hurt you. Sometimes those you depended on can hurt you. But you have to be at that level where you understand that the plan of God still stands and if God that didn't permit it it wouldn't happen I want you to pray for strength tonight I've been hurt by so many people people I helped people that all I had I gave to people that have helped their families people that I've, my words have changed yet they were behind the gun yet they take offense at me and I wonder what happened when your household demon came to me and came after me I've had I've held people who if it wasn't for that which I did they would have been dead and gone yet when it got to their chance and their opportunity they were the quick or quickest to trigger and shoot I've had all that experience. I've seen people who come and cry and weep and you're like, here, let me give you a hand of help. And they were behind the camp of your enemy. Yet I've understood that this is a period of wilderness where God has to teach you well. Sometimes you have to be, become immune to pain. Sometimes you have to walk and it's not that you're not showing emotions. It's just that you're tired. You're just tired. You're just tired. Uh, sometimes you're hurt and tired that people don't see where you're trying to push everybody to. You absorb everybody's emotions, but nobody takes yours. It's wilderness. Through it all. Learn to trust Jesus. Through it all, Dr. Mo. Learn to say, it is well with my soul. Whatever my Lord. That's what the psalm said. Whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. vision and God spoke to her I get I got jealous because how God spoke to her I was jealous she was literally in a trance and she just froze and was just writing and she didn't know what to write she likes typing she doesn't like writing so when I saw her, I was like, what's she trying to write? And I walked away. In fact, I wanted to take that book from her and say, what do you... 
but she said a few things that God said. In fact, what she wrote, she didn't know what she had written until she was reading it. Then God told her specifically something like, I have sent Lady Daisy to you. God told her a message to give. She said, I've sent Lady Daisy to you. Watch this. A few weeks later, Lady Daisy comes to me. Papa, I have a message for you. But she was afraid to deliver the message. I said, no, bring it. Let me. So she comes with a whole book similar to the book my wife had. She was struggling to read it just as my wife was struggling because they were both in trances. And in her book, God was assuring me to stand through the test of time. Watch this. What she didn't know, Lady Daisy, was I had been praying to God to give me a word. So now I go back to God to tell God, that I believe the word you told your daughter to me. And because of that, I'm standing strong. And trusting his word. In this period, God will use people to talk to you. Even in your wilderness, when you feel like you're done. When you feel like there's nothing more for you to do. God will still speak because he is watching over you. Tonight, I want us to give offerings asking God to give us strength in our period of wilderness. Tonight, I want you to give that offering and seed that you've never given before in your life. Listen, God still speaks. God is still speaking. I want you to challenge the altar of this church. I want you to challenge God. If you've never heard from God, I want you to challenge him on this altar. And ask him that God, I want to hear your voice in my period of wilderness. Some of you, your wilderness will be or might be you lost a job. You lost a child. You lost your husband. You lost your wife. That pain. You lost a family member. You lost a mother. You lost a father. And it looks like all life is over. Yet God told Jeremiah before you were in your mother's womb. I knew you. That means everything you're going through. You will go through. I knew you. And then God said. I am watching my word to be fulfilled. This means that until your death date. That God has ordained. He will forever watch his word. Oh my God. He will forever watch his word. Minister Chris. You will not fall by the wayside. You are too precious in the hands of God. For him to let you fail in the corner. Sometimes when he's, he's quiet. It means you're in your time of test. And he has to watch how you will pass. I want you to take that seed of 500, that seed of 400, that seed of 300, that seed of 200, that seed of even $100, that seed of 50, that seed of 25, that seed of 20. I want you to take that special seed. God didn't give me a specific or particular seed. He said, let them sow on this altar, even if, if it's a $1,000. Some of you, your wilderness might be your stage where you cannot conceive or have a child of your own. Some of you, your wilderness might be you've been jobless for such a long time. Everybody is going through that wilderness. Some of you, your battle with that lion might be that. Your battle with that bear might be that. But tonight, I believe when your seeds and your sacrifice falls on this altar, something will turn and shift. Ah, oh my God. And I want you to give like you've never given before. If you're given, if you're in America, if you're within the United States of America and you'd want to give by cash app, it's the dollar sign Rock Hill Church. If you're within the United States and you want to give via cash app, it is the dollar sign Rock Hill Church. Or plus one, plus figure one, 404-247-6460. If you're texting to give, please 
text figure one to 404 900 0220 some of you who are quite used to paypal which is in other countries you could give via paypal and it's the rock hill church at gmail.com as i'm speaking the details will be on the screen i want you to ponder i want you to sow the seed i, I want you to tell god that this message this conference was for me is for me and i want to put you to test Perhaps you are on our website, you want to give that $1,000, that $2,000, um, that $500, whatever seed. If you're tithing, because tonight is a Sunday, if you're tithing, please go ahead and do it as a Rock Hill Church member. Please go on our website, therockhillchurch.org, and please give. The office will put the details on this um, Facebook platform. I want you to give and ponder. Last Friday's message was, who's watching me? saturday was they are watching us and tonight is he's watching over me in my wilderness period which is the theme of this conference i have taken time to break down things that will transpire in your wilderness that you will and must look out for and i'm believing god for mighty mighty testimonies from you after this message i'm believing god that you will readjust and refocus realign your destiny because you begin to understand that this battle goes beyond you because the lord's integrity is at stake i want you to look into your bag i want you to look on your card and give that seed that will turn your life around that will turn your destiny around i want you to do this and honor god you see the problem with this new christian generation is we are very good in listening but we're terrible in placing sacrifices on altars so you see the truth is all religion understands the power of sacrifice but christian religion are talk talk but they don't sacrifice so how do or how does god respond when he doesn't see sacrifice then they will now tell you it's faith well you need to understand the mathematics the physics and the biology give and it shall be given unto you luke 6 38 if you love the ministry of dr sonny badu and would like to support rock hill church kindly send your donations online by visiting our website www.therockhillchurch.org and click the green give now button at the top right hand corner you can also give on PayPal to the Rock Hill Church at gmail.com or on Cash App, dollar sign Rock Hill Church with phone number 404-247-6460. God bless you as you give, for it is more blessing to give than to receive. Acts 2035.